Artists. Welcome back to Art Playground with Mrs. Vaughn. This week we're going to be learning about an artist you probably heard of, Claude Monet, very well known. But something I learned that was very interesting about Claude is when he was in art school, he would go with all the students to an art museum and they would set up their easels and they'd look at famous works of art and they would try to copy them. That was how they learned how to do art. But Claude Monet would find himself not really so interested in that and he'd always be moving towards a window where he'd set up his equipment and he'd draw what he could see or paint what he could see outside the window. I thought that was an interesting fact. That was obviously him trying to create his own style. He just didn't want to copy someone else. I hope you enjoy learning about Claude and I hope you enjoy the project we do in his style today. Oscar Claude Monet was born in 1840 in France. His father wanted him to go into the family grocery business, but Monet wanted to be a painter. At 10, he entered a local art school, and by 15, he became well known around town for his caricature sketches. He spent some time in the army, got sick, and his aunt paid a fine for him to be released and sent back to art school. He was not happy in art school. He found it old-fashioned and stuffy. He started hanging out with a group that was trying a new way. They were outside in nature, painting in quick brush strokes, trying to capture the feeling and the light rather than reality. It became known as Impressionism. But painting outdoors was hard work. You had to carry sketchbooks, easels, canvases, brushes, boxes of paints. Monet went out in the wind and the rain and the snow, but sold very few pictures. He was poor and stressed. He had a wife and a new baby. They moved around trying to find a place to settle during wartime. They went to England. He and other Impressionists could not get their work shown in art shows. So they set up their own exhibitions and a few people started to like and admire his work. After having a second baby, his wife died. Monet moved to the village of Giverny. A woman named Alice looked after his two children and her own. He was finally starting to make it after the show in New York. He could afford to live more luxuriously and he began to create his dream garden. He dammed a river to create an enormous pond which he filled with hundreds of lilies. He could create scenes from nature without lugging all the supplies or even leaving his property. He created over 215 paintings of water lilies from his own pond, working from morning until evening. He even had an outdoor room set up so he could paint large, large canvases of the water lilies. He suffered from serious eye problems called cataracts, which are very easily treatable these days, but back then they did not have the technology to do that. These paintings were painted near the end of his life. Even though he had vision problems, he continued to paint. The one on the left you saw earlier, it was water lilies and the Japanese bridge. Interesting for us to be able to see what he saw through those eyes that were damaged. Uh, sadly, Claude Monet passed away at the age of 86. All right, artists, time to get your supplies together. <clears throat> you will need watercolor paper, large paintbrush, small paintbrush, cup with water, watercolor paint, and oil pastels. Go gather your supplies. Here's what we're going to do. You're going to start with a very thick brush and we're gonna get the whole page wet. Not sopping, but wet enough that when we touch our watercolors to it, it will spread easily. So, cover, double check, and then you can get rid of that big brush. My sample, you can pull up any of his water lilies. The one I pulled up, I'm looking at the background colors. That's what we're going to do first. Notice it's lighter in the top, and the colors in the middle part are a lot heavier and in the bottom it's even darker so the light's coming from above so that's what i'm going to do i'm just going to have a little fun adding color to my paper uh, i'm going to speed through it so you don't have to watch the whole thing but have fun with it add water 
um, add more paint. Just keep going until you're comfortable with it being a nice background and that's all we're gonna do today. We're gonna let it dry at that point. dry overnight. Going back to my original picture I printed. So it's heavier in the bottom, lighter in the top, and I'm just going to take my oil pastels. My oil pastels are just such great tools. I love them. They're like a crayon, but so much better. So our water lilies are not an exact shape. They're kind of oval with some, you know, little bumps on the side. You're just going to draw some. In the picture I'm using is my sample. The colors on top are lighter colors, but the colors of the water lilies on the bottom are darker colors. So I'm coloring them in lightly. I'm going to use multiple shades of green. I just want it to look pretty lifelike. Also, I'm going to go back over with whites and grays and blend my colors to really make them not clearly defined. As you look at Monet's, it's not totally clearly defined. to share with you. One, when you use oil pastels, sometimes a little bit breaks off. And instead of smearing it with your hand, you can see me take it and I'm tapping my paper off to the side to make sure those come off. Secondly, I'm adding my water lilies. The one in my focus picture are red. Most of them I made them look like tulips and a few of them look like little roses. I just copied what Monet did as closely as I could to give the feel of the water lilies. The last thing I'm going to do is I am going to blend, blend, blend using white. It changes my whole picture. I love the blending part. like what we did today at Art Playground, please hit the red button to subscribe to this channel.